Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Hope you're all safe and well. Guess who's been down the local model store? Yep. Just popped in to say hi and I came out with this. Let's get this outer packaging out of the way and see what we've got inside. There it is. The EC1500 Twin 1.5 meter. It's Horizon Hobby. Ordered about three and a half months ago. Only just arrived here in the UK. Yeah, I'm excited about this one. The EC1500 version 1 twin Coast Guard colours, I seem to recall, I think it was orange and white. I was in two minds of getting it and by the time I decided to get it, it had sold out, it has gone. Uh, that was quite a few years ago so I had to wait a while. This one came out, I just jumped on it. The problem was I jumped on it three and a half months ago so I've been waiting for it to be delivered to the UK. It's only just arrived. I've literally been down the shop to pick it up. Taken it out of the box as you've seen and it's already it's got a mark there, a gouge, and this is all creased up at this end. So I'm hoping the foam packing protected it during shipping. Can get optional floats for it but I haven't gone for those. I have no need for floats, not really. I am looking forward to putting this one together and flying it and dropping things out the back. We're not here to look at a box, we're here to look at the parts inside the box. Let me move it to one side, get it open, and we'll do the usual examination of all the parts. First thing out of the box is the manual. Extremely thick, but that's because it covers multiple languages. I won't bother going through it. Needless to say, it will be used when we do the assembly. Bind plug. And we have a massive sheet of decals. Now I'm guessing, we'll have to look at the manual, that the reason there are two sheets here, it's in a sealed bag so I'm not going to open it, is because you could choose the scheme you use. I've noticed they do have some Horizon Hobby stickers and some Spectrum and also a number set so you can choose I guess your own numbering sequence and if I am not mistaken these aren't peel off stick on these are peel off lay over rub down then you peel the shiny gloss bit off and you're left with the actual decals on the aircraft without a big sticker. I don't know, we'll have to take a look when we do the assembly. That's nice. Then we have the spinners. Now the spinners come with the motor adapter. You've got a pair of them of course because you've got two motors. Five bladed props go into these and they're what I call the scimitar props. because They've got a shape of a scimitar sword. So obviously you have to attach the adapters, then the props, then the spinners. But they're quite nice. I'll just put those down here. Right, next up are two spars. We've got a... wow, it's solid. No, it's not. We've got a main spar, which isn't solid, but it's very, very thick. Let me see if I can show you that by keeping it in the packet. I don't know if you can see how thick that spar is. Inside here is a smaller spar. There's two spars. I might be showing my age here. Has anyone seen the film Krull? Because if you have, you will recognise that. <laughs> I have to watch the movie again. But that's one of the props. Does it need balancing? Who knows? Am I going to have fun balancing it? No, I'm not. <laughs> Here's the other prop. I don't think I'm going to have fun balancing these. I think they're going to be a nightmare. Something else about these props, they are very sharp on the this edge here, which I guess is the trailing edge of the, each of the blades. And what happened to me trying to unbox the inner polystyrene packaging I had it upside down, the whole packaging was upside down so the prop dropped out and as I flipped it up the other way it got stuck and sticking out and then as I started to pull the box or the, the inner part 
along the box. I thought, this is stiff, why isn't it coming? And this was slicing through the cardboard of the nice pretty display box. I had to end up cutting the display box across so I could pull that out and remove one of these. But it's not damaged, it's all good. Little bag with a magnetically attached aerial. This goes on the cockpit of the aircraft and it's removable so you can stick a camera in it. I have to check the width because I want to make sure I can get one of my little Mobius cameras in the area it makes, although it doesn't look big enough. I'll have to take a look. Oh, and look at this. It looks like it comes with skis. I guess they're both for the mains or the main gear. And then this one is for the nose gear. That's cool. That'd be good when I have snow. Just bits of plastic, but it's good to have little things like that included. I'll just put those over there as well. One tailplane, obviously low markings. This is the underside. Oh look, it looks like they just clip in. I didn't know that either. So they've got clips here. That's a place for the spa. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Wow. It's not a foam hinge. These have got um, fibre hinges. They're obviously glued in in some way with CA normally, but you don't have to flex them because it's not a foam hinge. They've got one, two, three, four fibre hinges. It's jolly good. So that's one. And we've got another one here with one, two, three, four fibre hinges. There's no horns on this. I don't know how that's going to work. Here's the clip. So as you push it in, it's going to clip into place. So it doesn't look as though there's any screwing on this part. There's no screwing and no gluing. That is interesting. Here's the main wing. Now, it's actually smaller than I thought for 1500, but that's of course it's got a big fat body, hasn't it? Um, right, my eyes are immediately drawn to the bad thing about this, and let me show it to you. It's here. This is appalling. Look at that. I would have expected better, but it's where this plastic cowl has been shoved on. That is not good at all, but it can be sorted out maybe with a bit of black tape over there to make it match the, uh, I suppose these are de-icing. That's what they're supposed to be. But I'll do something with that, but that's not good. There's the motor, and as you can see, the adapter would go against that. You've got some air intakes there. Air out through here. heavy at this end, it really is heavy, but that's because that's where all your motors are. So let's take a positive look at this. We have, although we are having to look at it upside down, let's bring it this way around, we have a three pin connector, that's all you've got, so connects on, that's beautiful. It has quite a stubby connectors on the fuselage that go into here. And it looks as if you have some screws or something that go in the top. Then of course you've got the hole for the wing spar to go in there. Nice panel lining on it. Forget what these are called. R not rakes, are they? Fences, rakes. Um, anyway, you've got those. I'll put up on the text what, what they are. What's the proper name for the this? It's got a lovely light in there with a smoked cover. And it's got a light in the end here with a smoked cover. And they run all of that from three connections. Unless there's pins here. It looks like there might be one, two, three, four, five, six other pins. And they're the main connectors. Servos installed, covered. Can't see any wiring. 
that's really neat no wiring runs at all it's going to be embedded into the wing uh, ball links metal servos you can see it down there I don't know if you can catch that there metal servos ball links both ends are ball links which is very nice horns already connected these I believe as an example you can either have a great big aileron because this is connecting these because this is a connection I don't really want to do it but as you move it the whole lot moves or you can turn it around the other way take that out and put it in here so you end up with a great big flap so it looks as though you have three moving surfaces where in actual fact you either have a small flat big aileron or a big flat smaller aileron. I do not know yet if you can have all that attached to make one big aileron and no flaps. I don't know. But it's very nice moulding. It's very pretty. Lovely and smooth. And again, if you noticed, it's got these, but they've got inbuilt hinging. No foam stuff in here. You can see the shape. You can always look for that shape. And that tells me we've got possibly Fowlers. There are other names for them. So if I've got that wrong, I will add it to the as text. You get two of those. Now that's much better. Look at that. That's much, much better. That's a shame about that one, but never mind. Yeah, basically exactly the same. And it's already set up here, as I've said, for a big aileron. Rather than a big flap. Everything else is identical. Except this is the better wing because they didn't muck up this bit. Uh, so much for quality control. Then we have a beautiful uh, fin and a rudder. I still haven't worked out how those elevators work. Never mind. Here it is. Lovely big rudder. Again, beautiful moulding. It looks as though this is plug-in. So it plugs into the fuselage and then there must be an attachment of some sort. It doesn't attach through there, so it attaches through the side. That's a shame seeing that, but never mind, this side's clean, this side isn't. It's part of the moulding process. Five of those CA fibre hinges. That's awesome. More ball links both ends it's really great all connected up here we go I'm going to have to put this down because there's no way I can show it to you like this look at this that's a one a fact of aircraft yeah, it's got a bit of a crease there I think that's where the box took the damage let me put this down here just so we can see this in all its glory. Look at that. Whoa. Yeah, so I'm going to have to zoom in on a lot of this. Let's start by looking here. We actually do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pins on that. Nine pins. Here's the little stubby bits that. I thought we'd screw into those, but if we are, it's plastic. So if we drop the wing down, unless the wing has got an embedded bolt, which it doesn't look as though it has, it's actually just screwing into plastic. So this wing would go here, as an example. Right, something like that. Get those in and then you put two screws through there. Wow. Oh I see, that's clever 
there, isn't it? Okay. Let me explain the elevators. So here we have a tail plate and elevator. This part and here, as you push this in, this embeds into that piece at the end here. And that piece moves and it's they've got the same on either side and because it moves it's moving all of this. That's quite different. I like that. A shame about that crease here. But beggars can't be choosers I suppose. Let's see if we can get this off. It's got little finger points here that we can get that off without any problems whatsoever. And this is this is the place where the magnet is for that little aerial. And if you don't want the aerial, you can put a camera there. And it's too small. I'll have to sort out some sort of mechanism to have a Mobius up here. But it's too small for my cameras. Yes, so cavernous is the word that comes to mind. Absolutely cavernous. Look at this in here. Steering servo for the nose gear. Uh, Avian light. It's only a oh, dual 40 amp speed controller with one of these SC1 connectors. Well, I've got an adapter for that because I don't use smart tech batteries. And this receiver in here, this is an AR8360T, so that's an 8 channel receiver, I think, and it's using 6 channels at the moment. But T is telemetry, big bay for the battery. Now some people use dual batteries, so they might have say two 2200s, four S's, and they put them in parallel. But anyway, you strap two batteries in there and you have an adapter going from each battery into a single connector and then you connect that into this. So the speed controller is 3S to 4S LiPo. But that's really cavernous. Foam wheels, but that's for the weight. These make a dreadful noise, so I intend to undo them, which you can because you've got these little grommets. Pull the axles out and put some silicon grease in there. Uh, I can't show you this, but this is the hatch that comes down, and you can drop your cargo out of it. I tend to use strips of ribbon with a 5 gram sticky bit of iron on the end, get to a good height, drop the bay, pitch up a little bit, they all slide out and the weight lets them drop down quite fast but because you're at altitude they don't drift anyway because of the weights bringing them down and they should all land on the flying field. This is good, this is a real air vent. So obviously it's taking air in at the front and it's pushing it out here. That's quite good. A little LED light at the back by the look of it. And these are the bits that move. So somewhere in there there is a servo, I should think, or a push rod. There's a connector for the rudder. It's a push rod, look, it comes all the way through here to those. Wow. Oh, I don't know where it... There's no hatches, are there? There's another light. I can't see how you can get in to look at your servos unless when this is open you can get access to them. This is for your nose gear. It plugs into there and you screw it in, and I'll show you that in a minute. Oh, well that wasn't very really good was it? I've taken that off and it's pulled the magnet out with it. See there? Easy fix but still. It's QC7, 
no it's not. This is QC6. <laughs> That'll come off like that. Strip, just a strip magnet. Glue it back in. That'll be fine. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, that's good. That's good. So that just holds on with a tongue and groove, and then two magnets. That's great. Look at that. Those wheels are quite small, but should be okay. I mean, this is a bit Heath Robertson, but it's sturdy, you know. I had mean, a big grommet, a wheel, cheap wheel, big grommet, but it does the job and easy to maintain. And the goodie bag has lots of plastic bits in it. I'm not sure what they're for. I'll have to work that out. Uh, there's lots of Velcro strips in it. Lots of screws. Oh yeah, and these black plastic things. I am going to get these out. These black plastic screws here. They are the screws I believe that go in through the top of the wing. And they are just that. They're bits of plastic. They're very flimsy. I'm going to measure them up and replace them with proper metal screws. I've seen some videos where people have real issues taking the wings on and off or getting the wings on in the first place. There's lots of screws in there that I wasn't expecting, considering that the wings are clip-on, the tails are clip-on. Uh, the rudder's held by two screws. But I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's quite a few in there. We'll have to see what they're all for, because at the moment I can't figure it out. Yeah, and that's it. It is a big beast. We're going to have lots of fun putting decals on it. The assembly shouldn't take long at all, given that it it is just push in, clip on, and then add a few screws. I'm relatively happy. I'm very pleased with it. I'm not pleased with this crease, and I'm not pleased with the motor cowling on one of the wings. But it's minor things. Uh, the weight was so long, there's no way I'm going to take it back and say, hey, this isn't right, it's not perfect. It won't be perfect. It won't be perfect when I finish building it. <laughs> Assembling it, sorry. So thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay well. I look forward to you joining me on another video soon. Cheers. <laughs>